uh, this is where we get our best our best arguments going because you say some stupid ass shit sometimes i swear to god and it's just <laughs> it's under my skin i like hey i like the i like to keep the people on their toes i like to keep you on your toes yeah so. you really I, I i have to come in with a fucking book a book with like stats and shit because i have to defend my opinion like what what the fuck is this yeah that's a, that's the point of this right is to argue, <laughs> our, argue our opinion i know Maybe. i'm just fucking around Come with more knowledge in your head, bro. That's all Dude, I got to say. Rocks, okay? This is rocks. Yeah, I know. On this episode of the KN Sports Talk, we're going back to back. Pete Alonzo went uh, back to back on the home run derbies, uh, derby this year. So we're going back to back. That's how I'm starting this. I don't give a shit. Uh, it was pretty fucking impressive, though, uh, watching this, because I fell asleep uh, during the Home Run Derby, but watching the highlights, uh, well, I guess it would have been yesterday morning, uh, was pretty fucking awesome. I mean, that dude was just, yeah. with ease, just smacking him out. It was crazy. Yeah. I mean, uh, it was a 34, he had a 34 uh, bagger in the first round. In the first uh, round, yeah. He was, the the difference between him and everybody else was so funny because, like, um, everybody was so serious. And then Alonzo's out there, uh, uh, they can play uh, music while they're hitting. Yeah. And they play whatever the players want. And he was, uh, uh, he said he was playing Nas and some Mob Deep for his New York, for the New York roots. And uh, he <laughs> was, I mean, he was vibing. I mean, he was just dancing in between pitches during his timeouts i mean he was he was just out there to have fun oh yeah for and hit, sure and hit, and hit and hit dingers i mean i there there was a clip of him like dancing legit dancing during a timeout and they were like mm-hmm. walking somebody off of the field or something like they had someone gotten hurt and he's just dancing away just gave no shits yeah it was pretty fucking sweet it was pretty funny uh i was hoping for shohei obviously i think we all were uh but i mean that first round they went it was epic though with him yeah. and soto yeah they I went mean, back was awesome. what was it double double hit offs yeah double hit <laughs> uh, they, well they went to they went to they had a minute round yeah. and then uh or 30 seconds whatever it was i think it was a minute and then they did a, a three sw- a three pitch or three yeah. swing off three so yeah, three yeah, swings three swing and then <laughs> soto goes three for three yeah, I as soon as I saw Soto go three for three, I was like, "This is over." There is no uh, way. Yeah, Soto's and then of course, this. yeah, and then then he puts first one in the dirt. Yep, yep. I mean, uh, it's tough to 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 go from game bats to hitting, you know, BP. Well, and then that was the other thing too. Otani hasn't taken BP. I was gonna say all we, year. Yeah, we, you you sent me the the I guess it was a quote card, but you sent me the quote card, and it said that oh, uh, Sho- or Shohei just doesn't take BP at all. Nope. This dude is hitting 33 home runs in the first half of the season, and he doesn't take BP. Like, what in the actual fuck? Yeah. Like, this is crazy. Yeah, so he has, yeah, so all these guys had the leg up on him when it comes to the BP home runs that you get in the home run derby. Yeah. So. I I just, I mean, and then, I mean, there's not much else to talk about in the, in the home run derby. It was, it, was, it was fun while I well, watched. And then I felt bad for uh, Salvador Perez. Um, if you watch that first round, you know, Pete Alonzo said that he was going to set the tone as mm-hmm. going first as opposed to uh, going second and, you know, playing catch up. And right. he goes for 34 in the first round and um, freaking um, Perez, I'm pretty sure, hit the second most. I, he hit 29. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I think you're right. It's you, you hit the second most home runs in the. Uh, in your first up. round, but you, you you're out because Alonzo just went off for 34. Yeah, like that, that is that. rough. Yeah, I mean, I, I know that I know they understand why they do it. They you know they have like a little bracket that they have to go through to get mm-hmm. uh, to get to the finals. But I mean, like you almost feel like they should do kind of like just like a, a grab ball. Like everybody goes their first round. Whoever the top you know four is, they go to the next round. Whoever the you know whoever the top two from that is goes to the, the finals and then whoever you know wins the finals wins the finals. Yeah. It's what they used to do. Um 
it was just based off of numbers, kind of like three point contest. Uh, you know, yeah. you're not going against anybody. You're just, you know, putting up numbers, but yeah, I don't numbers. know. I kind of, I kind of like it. I think it breeds a little bit more competition. Oh, a hundred percent. It does. hundred percent. It does. It just sucks for, you know, the, when you get the one, two punch, <laughs> but you know, the second highest person loses. Well, I mean, the highest way. <laughs> but that's what, I mean, that's what that competition comes from. I mean, Perez knew he had to hit a bunch. Um, yeah. He was just boom, 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 boom. But, um, no, I like, I think, um, home run derby where they're at right now i think it's perfect yeah from where, from where it's come a long way from where it started um some of those times where it's 10 30 11 o'clock at night and you're still watching the derby because it's just home dudes are just hitting bombs before the bombs, they get yeah. out like what was it that that one time um josh uh oh what the hell was his name uh, play for the rangers um, was it Dickerson but, or uh, Ham- is it Hamilton? I don't know. I can't remember what it was. Oh, I can't think of his name off right. the top of my head. But he hit like he hit some crazy number like that thirty plus home runs yeah. in a round, and then uh, like it just took forever as opposed to it being timed. I like that. I think it. Uh, I, 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 I like it timed. I, it I, I wear, definitely like it timed. Like I don't think it wears the guys out as much either. Like I think they're gassed like after they do a, like three minutes straight of just swinging with their timeouts. Yeah. But I think it's good. For the game at the home. Well, I, I mean, that. they used to they used to be able to just take balls and it wouldn't. Well, it yeah, wouldn't they were just strikeout. Right, and now you can't really sit there and take pitches. Yeah, you can't because take them. you're on a time limit, so you got to see. Did you see Alonzo's uh, pitching coaches uh, his spread, like where uh-uh. he was placing the ball? Oh my god, it was like this big. They were in the same exact spot every single time. Yeah, it and was that's what insane. You need. Yeah, All those derbies get put Hell somebody yeah. to put it in your sweet spot. Just bam, bam, mm-hmm. bam. Know exactly where it's going to be every single time. Yeah. Um, so we're just going to transition right into the uh, actual all-star game. Um, it was a good game. Like, I was I was actually pleasantly surprised. Like, I, I sat down last night to watch the game, uh, mainly because I wanted to watch Shohei pitch the first inning. Um, and – but also, you know, just – I haven't watched an all-star game in a couple of years. So I just wanted to you know what's going on yeah. with it. Right. And I mean, Tati's junior was awesome. I loved the fact that they had um, the players like actually mic'd up. And mm-hmm. so you, they were having interviews with them while they were in the batter's box, you know, while they were playing defense. Um, they had, they had one on the pitcher, the, the uh, closer for, uh, for the American league. Right. I can't remember what his name was, but um like he was out there saying "son of a bitch," and they were getting it on camera. They're getting it on the mic and everything. Oh my god, yeah. it was so fucking funny. Um, but I, yeah, it was. I mean, it's it sucked because it was like the AL. the The pitchers were just on fire, so the NL really couldn't do shit. Um, like even with the their monster lineup, I mean, they were. I don't think. Yeah. I mean, they scored what three points. I think it was. I think it was five to two. Five, yeah, five to two. I think, yeah, maybe it was something like that. I can't remember. I should probably have that pulled up, but whatever. It was a low, it was a lower scoring game. It's and, an all star game. Nobody cares about score, Kenny. Right. Well, I do. <laughs> when when you want the over, and I think that's care. and I I think that's eight straight two for the AL. Yes, that, I believe yeah, it was. Yeah, and everybody's like, "Oh, the NL is going to win. The NL is going to win." And I was like, mm, I don't "Hey, think so." I was I told I told you before we started. I I yeah. thought it, I didn't even I did I didn't watch for that fact. I thought that it was gonna I was gonna check the score and the NL was gonna be winning like ten to two or some crazy like yeah. that. I'm and, telling you, man. I'm the the AL pitching staff was just on fire last night. Yeah, yeah. Scherzer got about his, got about his head taken off by Vlad. Oh Jr. yeah, he did. Yeah, and Vlad had a Vlad had a fucking nasty bomb. It, yeah, it, that's the longest. I'm pretty sure they said it was the longest home run of his career. 468. Yeah, it was. Oh, it was beautiful. It was a moonshot. Yeah, I think every All Star game should be in Colorado. Uh, It's 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 like that should be the the, that should be the permanent spot. I mean, you're you're seeing 500 foot home runs in the Mm -hmm. the Derby, and then dudes are just hitting moonshots in the All Star game. Like that's what you want to see in baseball. Yeah, well, in All Star game, it's like basketball, NBA. You want to see dunks and crazy shots. Like the same thing with like the All Star game baseball. You don't want to see. A one nothing. You want to I don't see want to, that's, that to was 10. my point. That was yeah. my point. I wanted an actual like hitting battle. Yeah. Like I wanted scoring. Right. I didn't yeah. want I mean it's it's nice to see the AL's pitching staff, you know, do something, especially when you're only pitching for an inning. Mm-hmm. Literally just 
you know, you're going out for nine to 12 pitches, but I mean, they were, they were all on fire and it kind of sucked because all you want to see is bombs. Like, yeah, you get the home run derby the the night before, but I mean, you want to see, like, I wanted to see like Tatis had two, uh, had two shots literally like on the warning track. It was so close. Both of them were. Um, And ah, man, I don't know, but that, yeah, that, that shot from Vlad was literally like (laughs) this close to his head. Yeah, it was, and then they nuts. hugged it out. Yeah, <laughs> it was insane. It was it was a good time though. I mean, mm-hmm. for I mean, I, you know, Cleveland obviously, but uh, we're about to get. Uh, I think I think at the end of the year, I think we're gonna get the new the new logo for the Indians and the new name and branding and all that stuff. Oh yeah, is that gonna happen at that soon? I think so. I think I think it's either the end of this season or the end of next season, but. So- um, so let's transition into something real quick that's not on the list that I, yeah. that just made me think of it. So uh, Washington just announced that they are going to stay the football team again for this season, <laughs> and they're going to make their permanent announcement uh, at, in 2022. So, oh my god! Um, I've been to stay to the football team. People. Well, and that's what I've been. I was listening to some people, and I kind of agreed. I forget who said it, but they were just like the Washington football team kind of has grown on me. Like it's actually not that bad. Like um, to where like, just like in soccer, like let's go like Washington FC, you're the Washington football club. Like yeah. you're boom, just bam and be done with it. And you don't have to worry about logos and all, you know, all yeah, that just stuff. have a, just have a big ass W like, right. That's all you need. Oh, yeah. Or you can do like a WFC, WFT, whatever, you know, if yeah. you leave it. Like, I like it's kind of grown on people. Like, it's like, it's not really like at first, everybody was just like, oh my God, like, this, this is, is the worst. Stupid. Oh, we're the football team. Well, no, duh. You're playing in the National Football League. Of course, you're a football <laughs> team. But it's actually kind of like it is I what it, it is. I, I hate it. I don't, I, I, I don't hate it. I don't think it's like, I mean, I mean, it, it has no effect it, on my life whatsoever. Right. But you just don't like it. For 30 years of my life, I called them the r words and now all of a sudden i had to change and i still i still call them that from time to time i'll be oh i know and i'll say it and i'm just like okay well they're not that anymore and it's funny because you can go like watch people on tv and they'll do the same thing all the time they do it all the time it's hilarious you'll hear them go red uh uh, football the football team yeah (laughs) Um, speaking of people on tv did you see the whole bullshit with Stephen a smith did Oh my god! I didn't know if we would want to get into that or not. So I, I bring it up. I, you know, I have no problem fucking bashing on ESPN on this podcast. Yeah. That, that I mean, there is there is having a take and knowing that it's bad, but it's for you know good TV, mm-hmm. and then there's shit like this. Mm-hmm. Like what in the like the fact that these words and this thought came out of your mouth is just absolutely absurd and then he tried to clarify his statement and then he tried to apologize the next day and no one's taking any of it okay so nobody's taking it but let me let me kind of play do the opposite of what everybody let me play devil advocate i don't i i don't think he meant what he said like i don't think he meant anything by like we don't need uh japanese uh, you know uh him right. being not knowing english is is like i don't think he meant like it was bad for the game or like it was a bad thing that their best player is japanese i don't think he meant mm-hmm. anything by that i think he was just saying that in in baseball where it's lacking behind nfl nba and their you know um views all that all that type of stuff is right. that right, right, right. um it's easier for americans who can drive that you know tv deals and the viewerships and all that stuff Mm. it's easier for them to get behind an american player well that Um, so the problem but that's the thing with baseball is (laughs) they've been so dominated by spanish-speaking language players of over 50 percent, i think it is cuba dominican republic mexico you know south all those south american countries that are really just just really good Puerto rico just throwing baseball players out left and right yeah like it's really good uh, i i think i don't think he meant um anything by it like that you know like that to sit and wear like it was like you know uh 
a racist thing or anything like that. I just think that he was trying to say like, it's tough for t- a typical American person to get behind somebody who needs an interpreter. And then it's like, well, I'm not going to want like, who cares? Like, you know what it, it is, what it is. I think that's yeah. like where he was trying to think about it. I think he just completely <laughs> just himself crapped up, the yeah. bread on it. And yeah. Just yeah. Was not, would not, did not bring it out the right way. I, I, I don't care. Like that doesn't bother me at all. I, no. I, I'm a, fan of the game i don't care if you speak a language i've never even heard of before <laughs> go ahead like if you're good you're exactly. good like i was gonna yeah. say yeah if you're throwing if you're if you're hitting bombs and you're throwing 100 miles an hour i don't give a shit what language you speak as long you as don't you don't even have to talk yeah be mute i don't care yeah <laughs> be mute i don't give a shit just do, do sign you. language for all i care yeah i don't I, I i don't really understand sign language that much i know a couple words and that's about it but the way i mean it's it was it was the craziest fucking thing. And he's and he was like, Oh, well, I'm black, so I can't be racist. And I'm like, Yes, yes, yes you can, can buddy. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> you just proved it. And I, and I think that's why he was trying to defend himself that way, because I don't think he meant it like in a racial way. Right. It was just well, it, he it, just like, completely like, it was very ignorant. Yeah, statement. like you said, it like you said, it wasn't about it could he could have been uh of any race, he could have been he could have been Russian and only spoke, spoke Russian. And still yeah. Well, I, I don't even think it was, I don't even think it had to be, I don't even think it had to do with him um, not speaking English. I think it had to do with him, not it, him being Japanese where, okay. So baseball is big in America, Japan, mm-hmm. and um, you like know, Latin, Latino America, you know? Yeah. Um, so like, it, it's all like, that's, this is where I disagreed with him at. Um, if I if I looked at it the way I'm thinking he's trying to say it mm-hmm. is I think he's thinking like you need your typical um, Spanish speaking player if you're going to have a you know non English speaking person like you're you know the big poppies your David Ortiz I think he's trying to like that like David yeah. Ortiz was the face of baseball for a while spoke both English and Spanish and Spanish um, but uh, I think it's good um, Japan's a big baseball I mean we get I mean Japan plays a lot of baseball and it's big um i think i think the way that the mlb needs to grow i don't think it needs to be domestic i think they need to no. i think they need to do what the nba did and they need to focus on their international play and this is the best way to do it is yeah. to have a player from i mean it, japan is not an obscure country but like you said it's mainly spanish and spanish Huge. Being, china you know yeah. japanese chinese like those those countries the Asia, well, there's Asia, a lot of baseball asian yeah, yeah. asia in general because korea has uh, i think Basically, south yeah. korea has a big yeah. uh, south korean league yeah and um there's americans that go over there all the time and play yeah and but it, it's i think it's better for the mlb to have that international presence yeah to help grow the brand outside of america because you're Absolutely. kind of like when when you're the mlb you, you kind of know your place with the other major sports like hockey's on the rise like every, like people are starting to really get into hockey now and the nba is the nba that you know it's always going to have their demographic and their international reach but no yeah. one touches the nfl and so but the nba understood that so they went international and hockey is already international because of canada and, right. Russia and you know all those other places so it's already big enough as it is but the mlb they as much as as much as we have international players come in you don't really hear them talking about international play you don't because it's this right here atlantic ocean you know north Mm -hmm. america canada north america mexico all on down south america right Mm -hmm. other side of the pond yeah like you said you have japan and south korea and china but it's not like it does, like it's boom, it stops. Like there's not a whole, like, you know, oh, you're talking you know, about the European. There's not right. Like there's, Europe. you know, like, you know, like soccer's got a huge reach all over the, like, just like NBA, it's in every yeah. country. Yeah. Um, hockey is the same way. Um, Especially in you Europe. Know, right. So yeah. like, that's, I think that's the thing. I think if you can get, you know, if a, if a player of like his stature can be, cause you know, you think about it, if you go back like there, you know, like Ichiro, I mean, how big was baseball when Ichiro was, was yep. the, was was just manners was hitting 200 hits a season i mean yeah. the out the reach they had internationally was crazy and, and you're I gonna get to i swear to god you're he was just playing like three years ago I, he was <laughs> yeah. um yeah he like just retired a couple a few years ago but yeah. 
when he was in his prime, I mean, I'm, I can guarantee you that um, South Koreans and, you know, people in China were rooting for Ichiro because oh, he was oh, of, of that Asian heritage and it's yeah. somebody they could get behind. And, you know, them, they, you know, they're more advanced when it comes to language than us. They speak, you know, all well, sorts of language. So I'm sure they knew Japanese and, you know, all that type of stuff too. So they can understand uh, like, so like, but I'm sure they were rooting for him and all yeah. that stuff while and, and it's I the same way Shohei. Really, yeah i think if you can make him and that's the thing is shohei's even more of a superstar already than what ichiro well, was I mean, ichiro was better. great was a great player in love but ichiro was a you know typical he was just a hitter hunter. he's fast great defense defender and yeah. he put the ball on the ground and try to beat it out but shohei um, is the modern day babe ruth like right there's literally since babe ruth you've never been able to say yeah. that about anybody yeah, um, they uh, so they had uh, the Dan Patrick show today had Joe Madden, who's mm-hmm. the Angels manager currently, and they were asking him about they asked him about the Stephen A stuff and like all that stuff. He was talking about how Shohei's, you know, actually really like pushing to learn English, him and an interpreter and all this stuff. And mm-hmm. um, but uh, the thing that they asked Joe Madden, who would you compare him to? And he was just like, you know. You can't, I, I, he goes, I don't want to compare him to Babe Ruth. He goes, statistically, yeah, you can, but he goes, you know, I never seen him, saw him, no, you know, nobody around today saw Babe Ruth play. Right. Um, you see footage of, you know, his little legs running around is what he was saying. He goes, but nobody seen him play. He said that he compared Shohei, which I thought this was crazy, and I never would have thought of this, Kurt, Bo Jackson. He compared him to Bo Jackson. Bo Jackson dominated football and baseball. He was really good at football. And he yeah. was really good at baseball. And I he remember. said Shohei's kind of like the Bo Jackson of baseball, but he does it on pitching and oh, hitting so, so on, as a pitcher saying, and as a hit. Yeah, he's, like that's, that he's a two-sport player because he pitches, but he also hits. Them. Right. He's, you know, you don't have a lot of two-way players in yeah. baseball ever. I mean, <laughs> really. I mean, I mean, you do because obviously you play offense and defense, and you know, but you don't have pitchers pitching, hitting, pitching. Yeah, hitting you don't have pitching that way. hitting. Yeah, right. I agree with um, you. So yeah, I think that's that the is, thing. I thought that was a crazy. Like it made sense. Like yeah, it yeah, was kind of does make baseball, sense. but he's Bo Jackson was just so good in both and show. He's yeah. really good at pitching. He's really good at hitting. I think it was speaking of Bo Jackson. I this I told you this is what we were gonna do. We're just gonna start going and we're gonna start riffing off or riffing off everything. I swear. I I think it was Bo Jackson was talking um, maybe like last week or two weeks ago. Um, he was saying that he if he was playing in today's NFL, he would have doubled all of his statistics. All yeah, probably. Them. Yeah, I was like, I was like, dude, I know, like you're a beast, man. But you're probably yeah. right. <laughs> yeah. He's like one of those, like, he's one of those guys you talk about, like, uh, generation now, old generation, new generation. He's one of yeah. those where he's timeless. You could put him in any any style, oh, and he's yeah. going to be what you want him to be, if 100%. not more. Yeah. Um, all right. So, speaking of, what well, you know, international, let's, uh, let's go into uh, the Europa uh, finals. Uh, Italy beats, new, uh, beats England. And PKs, don't clap for that. Don't clap yes, for that. Italy. Don't clap for that. No, we wanted. We I was wanted, for the. We wanted it to come baby. home. We wanted it to come home. Okay, that's what we wanted. We were we were an English podcast. All right, not an Italian podcast. Nah. I dude, I watched that game. I so I watched it from start to finish, and everybody kept saying. Everybody's been saying they scored too soon because it was it was the fastest goal in your in europa finals history yeah, it was like three minutes two minutes two, two minutes. minutes yeah yeah so um and I, I i legit jumped out of my chair when they scored so fast and then they I, they just they just changed philosophies and they went straight defensive play and i kind of screwed them i i don't understand in in football or in football soccer why why you let your foot up off the gas as soon as you go up one nothing? Like, why would you do that? Why would you not push the issue? You have you have great attackers. Yeah, just push um, the issue. I didn't get to watch it. I, I was at a golf outing on Sunday when they were mm-hmm. playing, um, mm-hmm. but I did catch a couple like just watching like uh, sporadically, like at the turn and stuff, just to see it. Right. Um, but um, I yeah, so I can't speak on if they let. But I, in soccer, it's pretty common. Um, it is. It late, is. but later, 
Like if you score in the, mm -hmm. you know, 60, 70th minute, then it's, then it starts to sub defense. Like then yeah. like that makes like, I'm okay with that. Um, well, so they, it, the, the, the thing was they didn't, they didn't sub defense. It's not like they sub players in to play defensive. They just, they just went defensive. They weren't, they weren't pressing the attack. Aggressive. Right. Yeah, they weren't they weren't pushing the issue. Which is weird, which is weird because typically in soccer, the first half can get pretty aggressive. Like and typically teams are like aggressive. ultra aggressive or uh they're they kind of feel each other out. So in the mm -hmm. first half, that doesn't kind of, I, I meant to say first half is kind of feel yourself out. Like they're just kind of getting a feel for how they're defending, um, right. you know, what kind of passes they're looking for, that type of stuff, what spacing and openings they're looking for. And then the second half, it's that's where they make their adjustments. And then it's normally the second half is where you see pushing out and going, going, going. So I don't um, – but typically, you know, you get a goal that early. Typically teams, like you said, they don't normally do that. Um, I didn't watch it, so I can't really speak to it. Yeah. Um, but it, it is was... a typical uh, uh, soccer thing to do, uh, just sitting back and, you know, score a goal, then just kind of being – just wasting time pretty much. Yeah, I have I have no problem with them doing that. Like I understand the strategy when you're in in the second half, you know, right. 60, 70 minutes, you know, the minute mark, somewhere around there. And you just you just want to play defensive just to get out, you know, just to get that mm -hmm. one and get out. Um but I mean it was it was crazy after Italy scored their their equalizer. I knew, like, I, I knew right then and there they were going to PKs. I knew they weren't scoring again in uh, extra time. Right. And, um, I was – so I, I had to leave I, where I was watching the game. I had to leave, so I was watching it on my phone. And I'm sitting there with my phone in my hand. And when – was it Saka? Yeah, I think Saka was the last guy who, who took the last kick uh, for England. And he like literally just on like he just put kept the ball on the ground right to the left of the fucking keeper, and it was the easiest save of the, of the keeper's life. And I just I legitimately threw my phone in the air. I was like, "You've got to be fucking kidding me! This is this is insane! Like, how do you, you go from the, one of the hottest starts in Europa Finals history to just blowing it? I mean, it's not his fault. Like, you know, they had plenty. Yeah, of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I said, they had plenty of time to. To get that extra goal, you know, other players missed as well. I one went right off the fucking uh, upright. It was, it was a fucking um, shit. It was PKs. Yeah. Um, the uh, the person that I think got the most criticism out of that was Rashford, though, for England. Mm -hmm. I, I think he was the guy that really bit the bullet. Uh, did you see the one he missed? The one he missed on penalties. Yes, I watched he all of them. Faked, he faked out the goaltender. Yes. And he, he, he dove left and he kicked it to – well, so the goaltender dove to his left. Left. And then and then Rashford kicked it the opposite of him and he hits it off the post. The, I mean, yes, he, that's, what I was just, that's what I was talking about. That's what I was talking yeah, about. Yeah. He hits it off and, the post and, and I was so like – he had a mural. Oh. He, his mural, he had like a mural in some – I forget what town it was. And, and mm. he got it got like the base over oh, the I'm weekend sure. and all this stuff. Oh, my gosh. I mean, I, he was getting – Dude, it – as crazy as things can get over here, and like, get here, like here in America, it can get pretty fucking nuts over in Europe still. Uh, dude, it gets anywhere in the world when yeah. it comes to when it comes to soccer across the world. Um, I forget who there was this guy from South America that was actually uh, that actually was murdered in a bar um, after the USA beat him in the FIFA World Cup. Jesus. And he and he missed a, he missed a super easy penalty kick or I forget what it was mm -hmm. and they lost like one to nothing to USA. Uh, um, oh, who's the freaking American who's always on soccer cast? He's got the red red hair. Oh, Alexi Lovis. Back, uh, yeah, he he won the game or whatever. It was back when he had like the real long curly. Yeah. Hair. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, and there was a guy. There was like, I forget what he got. It was at um, out and like him and his brother got like killed in a bar. That's nuts, they got into man. a confrontation with a group of guys about it, and mm -hmm. there was like apparently it was like uh, mafia related down there, and oh, it was sure. like a, a mafia boss. I, I watched it, it was a 30 for 30 on it, I forget what it was called, but yeah, yeah, they uh, I get serious. You think it. we, yeah, we think we get serious about our sports T times that by about a million. Oh, and yeah, that's, you know, other countries because I mean, that's what you know, I'm not saying. 
you know, we're better than, you know, other countries or whatnot, but right. uh, we're like, there's a lot of con- like countries, especially like smaller countries, like in South America and stuff that aren't like the, you know, the big powers that, mm-hmm. you know, s- soccer and like, you know, baseball and those other sports, when their teams play internationally in the Olympics, when they win, I mean, that's, that's, I mean, that's huge for them. You know, that's like what they live for. I mean, that's yeah. what they got to look I, forward to, especially if, you know, you know, like third world countries that, you know, don't have everything that, that we have, that can't sit here and, and do a podcast online and air conditioning and stuff like that, right. watching their country play on TV and win. It's like some of the greatest things they see and I, they get, I mean, and I, I understand why they're so passionate I get it. I about get it. it. Yeah. I mean, speaking of, you know, smaller countries just dominating, in that, uh, you know, internationally, Nigeria, uh, for the exhibition games before before yeah. the uh, Olympics, they just beat us and Ar- uh, Argentina. It was it Argentina or did they beat uh, Australia? Maybe, uh, we lost Australia. That's what it was. We lost two in a row for the first time since the since pros started playing for the uh, Team USA. Yeah, we lost we lost two exhibition games in a row. We were guess, fifty-two. We were fifty-two and zero, or fifty-four and zero, and then it was two straight to fifty-two, fifty-four and two. Yep. Um, they did get back on track though. Be, they beat Argentina. They beat Argentina pretty, pretty yeah, easily, pretty which yep. which is funny because Argentina, I think, was like the fourth ranked team. Yeah, they're the they're Olympics. really good. They're really yeah. good. Um, I know it's exhibition. I don't give a shit. But you know, I'll care when the medals are on the line. But don't do that. Don't do that. I don't care. I don't. I, I don't right, so, don't care don't care but still win just don't do that. So here's uh, my thing. Yeah, go for it. I don't care. It's exhibitions. I, I know care. that's. I know. I don't but care. Like don't okay, lose. so I, I mean, you got to. I mean, go go back to to who's playing for the U.S. Durant. Um, gotta be. Uh, what's the I, the thing? Uh, Popovich said is the thing that surprised him was conditioning. And mm-hmm. it does not surprise me at all right now because well, they, they just got done with it, the long ass season. Back yeah, back. And, yeah, and like okay, yes, Nigeria, Argentina, uh, like the, they have NBA players, but they don't have the superstars like right, the NBA, like, we do. like the the USA has. So like Durant, Beal, Lillard, these guys are playing a lot more than what well, the, the guys playing on some like some like the guys from Nigeria like mm. they might be on NBA teams but they're, they're playing maybe the 10 15 minutes a game so yeah, they're the they're, they still they're still fresh like they're ready to rock and roll and plus i mean that's a pride thing i mean let's go um take it back to exhibition games um the year after ohio state uh won the national championship mm-hmm. um or lost in the uh, national championship in basketball. Uh, oh, so the, Florida. Two, the Florida. 2007, I think it was. Yes, because we lost the national championship uh, to foot- and football and basketball in to the same Florida. year. To Florida. Right. Yep. Um, and it was the, the very next season after, you know, Greg Oden and Mike Conley and all those guys left. Finley, mm-hmm. the University of Finley beat them in an exhibition game. Did they for real? Mm-hmm. I had no yeah. idea. Yeah. That's hilarious. Yeah. University of Finley beat him in an exhibition game. And I think uh, that was then the, that, uh, that following that same season was, mm. um, was that Evan Turner's freshman year? No, but, but I'm just saying they, they ended up, they ended up finishing like third in the big 10 that year. Yeah. Like it's, it's ex- like, who cares? It's exhibition. Like, who cares? Exactly. Yeah. As I, long as they come yeah. out now. Now, if they come out and stink up the joint in the Olympics, then it's like, okay, well, then maybe they just weren't that good. Yeah. Um, but like right now, it's just like it's exhibition. I'll, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna hold my breath. Like I'll, I don't, and I'm sure Kevin Durant's not giving it at all right now. No, I can almost God, no. guarantee. I don't care what he says. He is not trying his hardest right no. now. No, <laughs> no, he's not. He knows it too. He knows that he's saving himself for the uh, for the Olympics and the gold medal. Everybody knows you got to wait for the medals. Uh, speaking of awards and medals, Novak Djokovic uh, won his 20th Grand Slam over the weekend, um, tying him with Federer and Rafael Nadal. I'm sure you care so much about this. I did watch the match. I it enjoy was, tennis. Yeah, I enjoy it was, tennis. Yeah, it was actually pretty crazy. Don't judge me. I, I, I will judge you. I am a lover of all sports, sir. I will watch anything as, if it's on TV and I, I have the chance to watch it. Hey, all right. I forgot I'm not talking to Derek today. Mm-hmm. 
which we didn't even address the fact that he's not here, but that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he's Coach, typically quiet during these segments. I'm yeah. <laughs> Coach Stock has uh, has football obligations yes. Yes. right now, so he'll be back next week, m- maybe. Who knows? <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, he didn't even tell it. Like he didn't even tell us um, until the eleventh hour, twenty minutes before we <laughs> were supposed to go on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we'll see what he says next week. Uh, so yeah, he wins his twentieth. Uh, like I said, it ties him with uh, Rafael Nadal and Roger Federer. Um, I, I love him. I like. I think oh yeah. He, I, I think he's the best player now alive. Um, yeah, for sure. Um, I think, ah, I, mean, I think that, I think that if he, I think if he wins the U S open, which is in a couple weeks that he gets his, he'll get a calendar grand slam, which is crazy. Yeah. Um, I, uh, you can still argue with that. I, I, I don't think it's better. Federer's past, past his prime. Way past he's his get, prime. getting old. He's just not winning like he used to. Correct. Um, I would say I would hear and see. So you think I don't know much about tennis. I would probably say Djokovic is probably the best player on grass. On grass. And and Um, and, and and Nadal is by far the best player on clay. I don't know. I don't get it. I don't understand. I don't play tennis. I don't know a whole lot about the sport. I just enjoy watching it. Um, I love watching dudes just hit 130 miles an hour. 130, yeah. Like they're just fucking (laughs) smashing these things. Yeah. Yeah. that I enjoy that. I enjoy the trick shots that they can do in a live, uh, like like go and watch them play. They're playing at freaking Wimbledon and they're hitting between the legs, freaking between drop the legs, shots and yeah. stuff. Um, so no, I enjoy. I actually really enjoy tennis. Um, but Nadal is just like, it's like he's got Michael's secret stuff from Space Jam when he plays on clay. I mean, the dude is just <laughs> the dude is ridiculous. Yeah. Um, so is. I would. I I mean, I, it's definitely an argument you can make for sure that Djokovic is is the best player on the planet i right think now. that i think if i think, I think he, that if joke he might be the lebron to um to to durant situation here because oh, like okay. durant's okay. a really really good scorer right mm. and the doll's really 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 good on clay but Djokovic is really good on everything everything, everything right yeah. so like he's kind of like that he's kind of like that lebron he's all around just really really good at everything and the dolls just like that he's not i wouldn't say he's a one-trick pony because he's obviously a good tennis yeah, player I mean, he has but he's but he's like he is just like amazing on clay like yeah it's really like it's it's it's, it's, it's it's like like you said it's michael's like secret stuff it's he goes he, it's like he gets possessed when he's on clay it, the way he the way he plays the game is just crazy um but yeah, yeah. and so uh on top of everything else, uh, during his, or I think it was during his post game interview, he was asked about the Olympics, and he said that uh, he is on the fence, uh, 50 50 about playing in the Olympics because of all of the restrictions that they still have in Japan. Um, do you think that he should play? Um, I don't know how now. See, that's another thing, I don't, um, Olympics wise. Tennis is not is on the bottom of my totem pole when it comes to watching oh, yeah. uh, like Olympic stuff because yeah. I, I don't know why. I like I said, I'll watch tennis when it's on TV, but I don't really watch a whole lot of tennis the, during the Olympics. Mm-hmm. So I don't know how important it is to uh I think he's is he Switzerland? Sweden? Or is he what's I think he's Swiss? Mm, no Djokovic. I, th- I thought he was Russian. No, uh, I'm pretty sure he's like Switzerland or something like that. Oh man. I'm pretty positive he is from... he's not russian he's not russian i can I guarantee you that but um i don't um i mean that i mean it is siberian it is. siberian that is more russian than not, well, Switzerland. okay it started with an s i was close uh, <laughs> uh, uh, uh i don't i don't know if it matters a whole lot um right i mean that just, might be the only medal they win who knows it, it could well yeah true um but I mean, he's, and that's probably what he, he, he might not have. He's, I know he's competed before in Olympics. Yeah. Um, maybe he just doesn't want to. Cause I mean, like you said, he's, I mean, he's not the youngest buck playing tennis right now. He's been playing for a long time. So mm-hmm. he probably, like you said, he probably doesn't want to deal with the annoyance of all the restrictions and all that stuff. So he's yeah. probably just and, thinking, I'll just take a break. And if and, you're, if you're joke, like you just, you have to, I think at this point he's, 
he's focused on his personal you know triumphs like he's well, trying to and here's the, one grand slams you know what i mean here's here's the thing about the olympics certain sports don't need certain players in certain sports don't need the olympics to 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 assert their dominance like you right. know michael phelps as a swimmer Needed you need the olympics because there's no you know there's no there's no uh psl professional swimming league you know that's on right. tv every weekend that we're watching right. people do you know the butterflies and stuff every you know for a few times for for a few months out of the year Right. So, um, they could run that and, every year. right. So like track and field, swimming, mm-hmm. um, throwing, you know, all that, like that, that type of stuff. Um, the rowers, like, yeah, so, rowers, like yeah. um, like the, that's the type wrestling. of stuff that wrestling, right. Like those are the things in the Olympics that like gymnastics, um, uh, that people watch more. Cause like, I guarantee you, like the NBA is being played and, or basketball, basketball is being played, but I guarantee you more people are watching swimming gymnastics um you know all that all that stuff because it's more important in the olympics it's, because yeah, it's, it's, it's a bigger it's, it's a bigger deal in the olympics because this is their not a sport stage. you get to see and right it's like Even, it's their biggest it's their biggest moments like the basketball tennis you know these sports like if you know baseball softball when you know they were in the olympics like right. that like 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 nobody cares because like you can watch them when you can watch them you watch them every weekend or every day you know so i I like that's where i think it's not really that big of a deal if he does or doesn't if he does cool you know go out represent your country i mean that's always uh you know i think an athlete's goal in the back of their mind no matter what sport you play it's a a cool feeling to go out and represent your country Mm -hmm. put your flag on the back and you know go show out for your for everybody represent you know everybody that is around you but i don't think it's a, a big deal if he plays or not I agree. I I don't think that he should. I think that he should focus mainly on his um on his accomplishments. Like I think he needs to focus on the US Open. Um and like he like he just had a you know a big tournament at uh Wimbledon, so he needs to rest up for that and just focus on uh the US Open. Right. Um let's see here. Uh we'll talk about another we'll talk about another trophy. Um Tampa Bay Lightning wins the Stanley Cup. Uh, I believe it was a gentleman's sweep. Um, yeah, uh, four one. Four one. Uh, yep. They want they beat Montreal one to nothing in Game Five. Um, so that is three in a row now. So the Lightning won last year. Tampa Bay won this year, and then the Lightning won won again. And then oh, and uh, the Rays were in the, the World Series. The World Series, so they just lost. lost. Yeah. Uh, so. I, oh, never mind. I have two questions. Yeah. One, does it is title town just Brady town now? So like wherever Brady is, the titles go, or is Tampa just title town? Uh, I think Tampa right now is just is buzzing. Um, yeah. Like okay, so I mean the Lightning have been good before Brady got there. Um, mm-hmm. The Rays have made surprise postseason runs and been in surprise world series before Brady. Um, so I think Tampa's kind of was kind of a sleeper. And then I think Brady elevated it. Yeah. So, yeah. Cause he got the, once he got the Buccaneers to the, you know, and won the Super Bowl. I mean, cause uh, the lightning, cause you know, lightning won, you know, you know, Brady wins like then lightning win again. Um, yeah. Tampa, like the Rays were in the world series. The Rays are having another great year right yeah, now. In baseball. Year. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I I would think that Tampa is um, getting close because, you know, people have always wondered why people don't go to Florida and play sports because they don't have a state income tax. Right. Um, and it's Florida. It's, you know, it's fucking nice. Well, <laughs> it's warm all year round. Um, yeah. So, like, I think I, I think <laughs> that it's it can become very quickly the new, like, mecca of, of sports, sports, really. Yeah. I, I mean, if, if if everybody keeps up this way, I think I think you're right. I think Tampa. I think the Bucks are going to start seeing a lot more uh, influx of people coming in, especially if Tom stays for a couple more years. Uh, I know that the Rays are a smaller budget team, but they always seem to figure out a way to they, build they, with that budget. Yeah, and they can always they always compete. And, and they then, Tampa's the got a lot of good young players too. Yeah. And then the and lightning. Like well, player. so for for hockey, there is this like weird rule where at I think it's at some point in the playoffs, the um 
the salary cap just doesn't matter anymore. And so that's what Tampa did. Like Tampa just went out and just got all of these players like in that period where the right. where the salary cap doesn't matter anymore. And I swear to God, they were like six hundred million over, something like that. Like it was insane. <laughs> I think I yeah. think the guy I think a guy was wearing a shirt that said a, like six hundred eighteen over the cap or some shit like that, which is yeah. hilarious. Um, but yeah, uh, <laughs> funny thing about I was watching the game. I was watching Game Five, and I put something up on snapchat just you know you know saying i was watching the game and your brother messaged me and he's like i didn't know you were a bolts fan and i was like fuck man i used you know i used to live in tampa if you know it's like one yeah. of the first like oh one of the yeah I went yeah to. pat's pat's become very big on the lightning so yeah. um, i think everybody he, out in tampa has like uh, why would you he's, not he's uh he's not i wouldn't say he's like he wasn't he wasn't like even a casual hockey fan mm-hmm. um like our dad was a Red Wings fan. Um, I very, very much enjoy. I'm more of a hockey person than I think my brother was back then. I've yeah. always rooted like, like the Red Wings. And I think he was just kind of Red Wings win, cool. Like I'll watch them if they're in it. But right. like, um, it, you know, he's he's diehard Buckeyes, he's diehard Browns, Cavs, Indians. Um, so I he never really had a hockey team. And then he moved down to Tampa and he got to go to a Lightning game when they were good. And he's yeah. been to a few. Uh, and he Dude, it's electric just, fell, he just fell in love with it so yeah i like it, yeah like not, it's, to, it's, not to be yeah. corny and use that pun but they are all like yeah yeah no i get it like there's you know yeah you know, especially if you you know and i don't think he had ever been to a hockey game before he went to a lightning game oh man. so he oh, God, never, i love hockey in real in person so, it's so yeah much he's, fun. oh yeah big time so i he got real into the so yeah like now he is just like a he because he's lived in tampa now for six years i was gonna say it's been a while yeah Yeah, so he's 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 kind of uh he's put his roots down down there in florida and he's kind of yeah it's lightning or die with him man when it comes to hockey now he's all about he know like it's funny like you could talk about red wings players and he would know like you know eiserman and fedorov and like all the you know the the good players of the red wings but Mm. like he is oh my god he knows them all like i'm sure (laughs) and i'm sure he knows how many goals they're scoring oh you know all yeah, stuff. So it's he, funny. It's, he was it's funny. He was like, "Dude, next time you're in Tampa, we gotta go to a game." I was like, "Bro, oh, yeah, you just let me fucking know." Yeah, <laughs> like, he would. He would freaking love that. He tries to get people down there all the time. Oh, I love I, I, to go. I, I, it's so much fun down there. Um, well, let's. Okay, well, oh yeah. So during the parade, I forgot to talk about this, <laughs> but during the parade, I don't know. I swear to God, they try to throw the fucking cup, right? Like, did you see that? I didn't they try see to, it. They try to I, throw it from boat to boat, and this is yeah. this is Stanley Cup, man. This is the Stanley. This is well, the Lombardi let, Trophy. You, you couldn't let Brady, you know, <laughs> you know, be the I'll, way. I'll show they, you. They're, I'll they're show probably you. thinking, you know, Brady. Brady's throwing this little sissy trophy around. Yeah. We can throw Stanley's Cup between both. We're <laughs> hockey players. Yeah, that didn't work out too well. No way, dude. Did you see the cup? Like the, yeah, the actual cup is the actual cup is like bent in half. Yeah. <laughs> So it's been sent back up to Canada. It went to Montreal. To it went to Montreal. Yeah, which is hilarious. <laughs> I saw someone on Twitter say this is the only way that Montreal is going to see this cup. <laughs> uh, dude, I I I know a lot of people think that the fucking boat the boat tour thing is like trash. I, oh, I love fucking it. love yeah. it. it. That's like, awesome. I, I it has got to be the best parade out there dude like, you're in the south it's it's hot like yeah it's, it's perfect just like boats I'm, everywhere people are yeah. just chugging beer oh i want God. yeah um all righty so dude i am on fire with transitions this week we're gonna go from one thing breaking to the next did you see conor mcgregor's fucking fight dude watch all i watched every single oh. fight did you watch the card? I, I didn't watch the card i watched the whole card man it was it was good I heard it was good i heard it was, it good. was really good I heard Greg Hardy uh, got his uh, yeah, Greg Hardy got his. Oh ass my beat. god, dude! I freaking absolutely hate Greg Hardy, and everybody I'm, does. Everybody does. Why? Why would you like him? Like, I, dude, I, you have like. I'm not saying I do. I'm just saying everybody. I know. I'm just saying like I don't care. Like, fight me on that. Like, if you like Greg Hardy, fight me. Like, I don't like. There's he is a garbage human being. There is nothing great about him. I don't care what you have to say. And I, he can say it himself. He could probably, he would rip me in half. I don't care. Yeah. Don't like him. Don't like yeah. the dude. And I, dude, the, um, I, dude, he I'm, got fucking I'm blanking one on his name. I'm blanking on his name. Oh, it's, uh, it's kind of like two, like, it's kind of like to his name. Yeah. Um, 
I like, took it's like took by it a up, load but, but, uh, it's uh, no, it's that. not like yeah, it's not but that, but it's kind of like that. I was I was watching it and um, I got mad because he not he hit him with the he hit him with the punch and he froze and he was starting to fall down. I jumped up, freaking jacked out of my mind, and then the stream froze. Oh my god! For brief, for, it was for like it was like for like ten seconds, not even uh, like five, ten seconds. That's, that's but I was enough. just so mad because like literally he got punched, he went stiff and was yeah. on the way down, and then it was like right here he was halfway down and it just froze. And I'm like, what the? F-? <laughs> like just I just started, started throwing shit. Like I went, motherfucker. I went, I went from pure joy to pure anger in the drop of a dime. <laughs> and, um, but, uh, Tuavasa, Tai Tuavasa. There you uh, see, I told you it was kind of yeah, like it. Yeah, no, 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 I know. And, uh, but dude, I, how, how great with Kent came out to walking out to the Spice Girls. Oh, that's hilarious. I love her. And he yeah. was just singing it. He had the, the ladies at, in Las Vegas were just going, and they were all standing up, vibing, you know, with all their <laughs> drinks going. And dude, dude so, he was, and he looks completely like nothing. Like I, the dude's got a gut, and it's uh, like, what's uh? Remember Roy Nelson, Big Country? How yeah, he'd always country. His, yeah. I, it was even worse in Big Country though. Like it, like oh, it, it was, it was jiggly. like he was. Yeah, Very it was like jiggly. he was, it was, like he was fat at first, and then he and lost, lost a, bunch a bunch of weight, weight. and then it's just there. It's just like it's just his skin's yeah. hanging there, and then he has those tattoos around his hips, mm-hmm. and I thought that he was like, I thought he had like um. Oh, not like hip pads. I, I thought he had hip pads on his, <laughs> on his body when I first saw the picture of it. And I was like, what the fuck is he wearing? And yeah. then I was, and then I like actually looked at it. I was like, oh shit, they're tattoos. I'm an idiot. Yeah. Um, um, but, but yeah, yeah. Dude, that was, that was awesome. Um, Sean O'Malley against uh, yeah. uh, Matino. I think that's how you say it. Matino. Yeah, dude, I felt, dude, I mean, that, Matino, that kid fucking. Dude, they, they talked about the story about like how he was, he's been like bagging groceries just trying mm-hmm. to get by, trying to make it as a fighter. And then he took this, what was it, six days? Ten days. I think, ten I think days. it was ten days. And just came in and just pushed the issue. That was the thing I loved about that fight was that kid did not freaking back. Because Sean O'Malley. Dude, he's is, a fucking. He's, uh, yeah. The thing yeah, that two I, rockets, think, I think just that boom, was boom, the, boom. the biggest disappointment of the night. I think it was Herb Dean that was officiating that he called it with he called it 30 seconds, seconds. yeah i heard it's like erm come on man like this yeah. dude is he still he was still pushing he looked like absolute hell like he looked <laughs> well, like he had, I, I heard that like o'malley was just like pummeling him he just wouldn't go down and o'malley didn't know what to do yeah. like, he was just like so like in awe of like dude you were just taking all my best shots and he just kept pushing for Musino just kept coming yeah. kept coming that, and um who was it um cormier came up uh Matino after the fights were over and just like dude you are like the most savage person i've ever met in my life like the way you just kept, <laughs> like on 10 days short notice to just come in and just take all those punches and keep going like yeah i mean because I, I forget he made he made like over like it was like six figures just over six figures on that i mean to go from bagging groceries to six figures in 10 days Less yeah. than two weeks. I mean, that's huge. That's life changing. Shit. For, I, for, give me ten days notice. I fucking yeah. I'll, I'll take a punch I mean, or three. I mean, I probably would have been <laughs> sleeping within thirty seconds. Oh yeah. Took, but oh yeah. I'm just saying, for like, sure. you know, I mean, like for a guy like that who is that tough to make get that much money. I mean, you know how much gym time he just got. Oh, off of that? oh fuck that! Fuck that! That's people a whole year. Watch, people are gonna watch that fight, and he's gonna he's gonna get. A, like either a sponsorship well, well, or he's going to get put on a team or something he's well, going to get and now i mean you know these ufc fighters they have to pay for the gyms they work out in and the trainers yeah. and all that stuff like i mean you just made you know 100k like that's a whole year's worth of training probably yeah well that's what i'm saying like a lot of these guys that's why they join the teams is because yeah it's not the, they it's can, the teams the, the teams pay for it right but like still but then like now you can you know like now you're like you can live comfortably said, for a while yeah. Yeah, you know, for said. you know, if you can if you can uh, become a fighter bagging groceries, a hundred k, you could live for comfortably for a couple of years. Uh, <laughs> you know, just training and you know living off off the money. But yeah, um, that was um, that was probably the 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 worst part of the of the fight card was um, him calling it, him calling it. Oh, well, and then obviously McGregor, um, mm-hmm. which we can now we can get to uh, yeah. him breaking his fibula and his tibula. Yeah. Which is insane because everybody's like, "Oh, he broke his ankle." Well, 
yeah, he he did, but his leg was broken. There was nowhere for his ankle to go. Like this, there was nothing holding his ankle. On. Yeah, it, it wasn't yeah, that his it, ankle was broken. There was just nothing there to hold it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. And, it was. And, a, I mean, it, so. Oh my god, I, I'm blanking on who it was. Uh, the last, the last leg that got broken. Um, I'm blanking yeah. on it. It doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. But anyways, with that one, you saw it because he took, he took the shot. It got checked and it just snapped. And then, but you know, before he could realize what was going on, he tried to put pressure on it, and it, you know, that's when he fell. With McGregor, you you couldn't really you didn't tell. know because he fell down and Poirier jumped him and got but, back on top of him. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, is like you like when he got that shot, he was able to put pressure on his leg for well, a minute. I'm, before I'm just, it I'm just I, yeah, I'm just saying when his ankle went. He as soon as his ankle went, he fell down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did. And and Obviously. when he fell down, Poirier, Poirier jumped was on, on him. him. Yeah. And it looked like Poirier caught him, is what it looked like. And that's mm-hmm. why he fell. Uh, Poirier missed the punch when he fell down, but then Poirier jumped and was going at him. And then all of a sudden, th- then you see the replay, and it's just like, oh yeah. yeah. His <laughs> ankle's <laughs> gone. <laughs> um, it's not that it's gone. He just got a new ankle. I, <laughs> he has two I, ankles now. Um I, it, I it was, I, still can't believe. I was really hoping that this was the fight that brought McGregor back to great. Yeah, same. Poirier same. kicked his ass. Dude, it was so, so much. He was talking shit. He was talking shit on the ground saying that, you know, it was a good first round, but the second round was ready. He was going to come and get him. He was, like, I think it was a good first round for like the first minute. I think McGregor really dominated the first minute, mm-hmm. 30 seconds to a minute with his leg kicks because yeah. I don't think Poirier was, was ready for that. I think that yeah. was a new aspect of mcgregor that he brought out mm. uh, but then poirier i mean was just dominant for the rest of that time after yeah. that and yeah. he, he uh, pushed the issue he wasn't he wasn't letting up and i i think the problem is is that poirier i mean mcgregor ah oh man like i think he really pissed uh, poirier off with the whole wife stuff that he kept doing yeah and then he did it again from the floor and i'm like bud you have a broken foot like leg calm down well here's the thing i mean mcgregor is an idiot when it comes like i think he's his trash talking is more just to try and get in people's it, in his opponent's head in his head yeah, um, 100%. and he's and he's irish so he's really good at talking crap um so but uh the the, the first first match poirier mcgregor when mm-hmm. mcgregor knocked him out poirier yeah. wasn't anywhere near as good of a fighter as he is now yeah i was gonna say it was a like literally fight, it's but... been like poirier has gone this way and mcgregor is going this way like they're yeah they're passing each other like Poirier is still a dominant like and you and it showed I mean he was beating the crap out of McGregor last on on Sunday or Saturday yeah Saturday McGregor is suspended well I mean it's like a medical suspension for six months because of this um I don't think he comes I, I mean I think he comes back I mean I think he's gonna fight again but he will never be at championship level again well, and like I, I, I hope Dana White realizes that like it's it's like the McGregor is like times over, like yeah. um ever since he uh, lost um lost, ever since he was, like, ever since he lost, lost his champ, champ he's one in four in five oh, yeah. fights yeah and his one win was against Cowboy Cerrone yeah which cool like Cowboy well, Cerrone was past his, fight. Yeah. was past his prime at that time yeah I um, got up a fight yeah, so he's lost Poirier twice. Um, I, I just think it's, I think it's time it's, for Dana White to leave the Conor McGregor stuff alone. He's got enough good young fighters now that he yeah. doesn't need McGregor <laughs> to, for a big card anymore. I mean, don't get me wrong. I think you can bring him I, back kind of like he did with, uh, Chuck Liddell, Tito Ortiz. Like this could be the Liddell Ortiz thing, you know, yeah. where they just seems like they're going to keep fighting for years and years and years. And I was going to say, just, like, he could, he could fight. He, he, could, he's probably going to fight Poirier again, just because of how this one ended. Um, but I don't know because, but when's it going to be? Because if, if I'm Dana White, I think Poirier is my number one contender now. Cause he, I think he was ranked third or second coming in. Was he? I thought he was fourth. No, McGregor was fifth. And Poirier was either three or two, or two. Oh, okay. coming yeah. into that. So if I'm Dana, like as dominant as he was before the ankle break, like I'm putting Poirier, he's probably my number one contender, and letting him fight. I'm trying to think of who who the ch- the champ is right now in that division, but um, 
Uh, that is a great question. I, it doesn't matter. Um, is yeah. there, are they welterweight? Yes. Well, so uh, yeah. Is it, is it lightweight or welterweight? I think they are fighting at Walter. Which I think is Usman is the welterweight champion. Uh, high profile when Ernest Poirier higher spot top than top ten. Oh, just tell me what he was fighting at. Uh, Poirier's lightweight. Lightweight. Yeah. So lightweight would be Charles Oliveira. So yeah, I mean, I would think. Um, I would think this would be the time. I'm trying to think of. Let's see. Um, UFC That's rankings. Crazy. Yeah, Poirier was two. You said it was Charles, right? Charles Oliveira. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he yeah he's, he's the one. Nice. Yeah, he Holy shit! So he hasn't, he hasn't fought since. Well, he hasn't. Well, he fought back in May. Um. So yeah, I mean. Um, because because Gaethje lost. Oh, uh, I remember this guy. I yeah, yeah he knocked yeah, out yeah, Tony. Yeah. He beat Tony Ferguson. Um, so well, his his last his last fight he beat, he beat uh, Michael Chandler. Yeah. Or, so yeah. um, I would think I would think it's probably Poirier Olivier for the belt, or I, I mean, so. un- unless you give right. unless you give Gaethje a turn first, um, just because Gaethje hasn't fought since he fought uh, Khabib. So I don't know. Um, what Dane is going to do, but I'm. That would be a really good fight, Gaethje versus Poirier. Let him do that and be for the uh, number one contender. Number one contender. Yeah, I mean that would be a really good fight. I would, I would, I would watch that. I would watch that card because I, I like, I love Jason, Justin Justin Gaethje. So, yeah, I definitely would watch that card. Um, yeah, it just, it just sucks. I like, so, I just. I think I think that McGregor will always pull a card. Like, if you say hey, McGregor is going to fight on this card, it's going to do a big number. So I think everyone's going to want to watch it. Well, just, yeah, I mean he's so. But, but don't but like he's going to have it's going to have to be a money grab. And yeah. but here's the thing though is if Poirier's fighting for belts, who are you going to? I mean, who are you going to get? You have to, to push the belts. Grab? You have to push the belts. Right, your your belts are your top your top priority when it comes to numbers. So yeah. Um, I would rather watch Poirier fight Gaethje for a number one contender spot than I would watch Poirier fight McGregor again. I agree. Um, I also think that unless you're fighting Poirier versus McGregor, I don't think you put them on the same card again. I think that you either you split them up no. and make sure that they're never on the same card again unless they're fighting each other. Yeah. Because the the actual bad blood between these two is real. Uh, yeah, they hate that, each other. Yeah, they hate each other. Absolutely hate each other. It will it'll overshadow everything else that you're trying to do. It'll just mm-hmm. be about them, and you just can't have that. Which, yeah, which you don't need in the UFC anymore. Like the the Tito Ortiz, Chuck Liddell beefs, like that stuff's yeah. done and over with. Like, like um, it's like like it's fun with McGregor because, like you said, he's really good at talking shit. Yeah, but but like with he's everybody really else, good. You either absolutely love McGregor or you freaking absolutely hate him. Yeah. Like, I've and, never heard anybody go, McGregor, eh, he's whatever. Like, he's, like yeah, you know, you're, it's either like, oh, my God, I love McGregor, or like, God, that dude is stupid and annoying. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, I, I think I think he was – I think he's probably one of the, the last real shit talkers in the UFC. I, a lot of guys nowadays are, like, they're respectful and – you know, they they do their press conferences with no with you know no theatrics. They answer their questions. They are respectful to the other fighter. Like you, you see, most guys after the fight walk up to the um, up to their opponent and either like give them a hug or shake their hand. Oh, yeah, or, yeah, and that's just you know. to your respect of fighting, which is how yeah. it should be. Right, but, but um, I, you're seeing a lot. You're seeing a lot more of that now, and a lot less of what McGregor does. Well, you got to also think too that. Um, UFC has um, taken, um, you know, that foreign overtake, right? People from other countries. Oh, yeah. And in other countries, it's not about the shit talking. It's about the fighting and the style. Like, you fight out of respect for your opponent. You don't fight your opponent because you hate them. You fight them because that's who you're slated against, and you're going to fight them and, you know, let right. me the best man win. Right. Um, where, you know, 
there's the uh, American Irish, you know, McGregor style where it's just like this dude, I'm going to, you know, I'm the Dang. best there is, you know, Muhammad, Ali, I'm the best there is. I don't care. I don't care if I like you or not. I'm going to talk crap about you until yep. we fight. Yep. I, like, uh, yep. It's a dying breed for sure nowadays. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, I mean, I love the UFC. I, the fact that it's not, I mean, I, I know it's big, especially international now because with all the international fighters and everything like that, I, I really, really wish that they would get it off pay-per-view. Like, I think that it could, I think that they could get a big enough TV deal like the NFL or um, the NBA. Oh, no. You don't think so? No, I think, no, 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 no. You got to think you, about you it. Gotta... Think about it. They have, they have their, their smaller card on Wednesdays. Like almost every Wednesday have Wednesday night fight nights, you know, and then you have, uh, they have fights every Saturday. It feels like anymore. And no, it's not every Saturday. Day, so. A couple times a month. But here's the thing. The, okay. the fighting is a spectacle, Right. Combat right. sports are like a spectacle, like to go oh, and exactly. watch somebody just absolutely get the crap kicked out of them or somebody beat the crap out of somebody else. Mm. It's a spectacle. Like, um, like I, I think they're doing like, it's like, if you're about box. to say wrestling, if you, if you're about to say wrestling, cause boxing, you're right. But boxing uh, is, no, well, UFC is, 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 is way over step boxing now. I think like well, boxing is boxing is like, it, of, like literally it's probably boxing. UFC wrestling and then boxing when it comes to pay-per-view all right yeah, I, I, now boxing still makes money you know but it's also like, dirty as shit and everybody knows it and no one does anything um, about it i i would i would i don't know the numbers but i would i wouldn't be afraid to, to say that wrestling wwe probably makes um has more views and pay-per-views than than boxing does and i don't watch that anymore there's not a lot of people that do but yeah um I, hey man they're going back out into the real world I mean, on Friday. UFC is is number one in combat sports, and combat sports are on pay per view. It's how it always that. been. It's how it always will be. I, I don't. See, I, I just. I just. I think they should do it like the like the UFC or like wrestling does. I know that you can't just fight every week, but like have a have a card on ESPN or like. I, I guess do. they kind of already fight do already. They have their fight nights and stuff like that. But the, it's like it's like small like. I, get like a bigger it's name up and, and coming guys i understand and that. then and then it's typically up and coming guys and then maybe some older guys right but like that's what i'm saying like if you got like a like a i'm not saying like a like a justin gaethje or you know a poirier or you know right. anything like that but but here's the thing though like casual ufc viewers aren't gonna watch that you don't think they're gonna watch no because like you said it's they don't know who they are like well, that's, like, okay. that's what, like, that's what I'm, I'm not saying. a huge okay i'm not i'm like i, I will go like i'm not going to say like i'm like a expert when it comes to ufc or right. anything like that i right. watch i'm a i would say i'm a casual viewer um if there is something on espn or whatever to watch mm-hmm. during the week and i see the names on it if i don't recognize any of them i'm not going to watch it because i don't care right you know what i mean you, you know it's going to be a shit fight well, and it's not even that ones. like but but like some of those guys are up and comers and trying to make a name for themselves and it's mm. technically a ufc fight so yeah. you know that's their way to get into pay-per-views main cards all that stuff right. so uh, a normal ufc viewer somebody that actually likes watching you know that isn't enjoys the sport just for you know or trains sport, it, does it right. whatever like they're gonna watch that stuff but you're not gonna get 60 million you know or not 60 million you're not gonna get like two three four million people watching a pay like like a pay per view on a Wednesday night, you know, right? Night. Obviously, you're obviously. gonna get a you're you know, it's it's gonna be like watching uh, a freaking regional baseball game. Is what it's gonna be like, like watching the Indians on Valley Sports right now. Like that's yeah. what that's what that is. I mean, so I I think that like it creates that buzz, that spectacle. They do the weigh ins, the face offs, like all yeah. that. There's a bunch of stuff that leads up to it that just blows it up by it when it comes to Saturday. I agree. I mean, I, I agree with you. I just, I think that the, I think that there's a way for them to, I guess, optimize it better, get the product out to more people. Because, like UFC does pull numbers, especially with their pay per views. But, like, if it was if it was on you know cable TV like the NBA or NFL or whatever, I think that they could get a lot more numbers with it. Um, 
this is gonna be my worst segue of the night because I really don't have anything to go off of it. Um, but it is uh, it is Wednesday night, the 14th, as we're recording this. Um, I'm looking at the score of game four of the NBA finals right now. It is at halftime. It is 52 to 52. That's nuts. Devin Booker's got 20 points right now. Uh, Middleton's got, looking good. Yeah, Middleton's got 16. Um, I, what about uh, uh, Giannis has got Giannis. 14, 12, 14, something like that. Okay. So, yeah, he's, uh, I mean, it's a pretty even game right now. Uh, do you think the Bucks pull it out or do you think the Suns are going to, the Suns have been up this whole time. Uh, through both quarters, they were they were leading the whole time until the ha- until halftime. Yeah, um, Suns came out hot. I saw it was like sixteen to seven at one point in the first. Um, mm-hmm. As I keep glancing at the score, um, I don't know. I think I think Milwaukee's got it. It's something about Milwaukee at home. I don't know. They got an edge. Giannis is is tough at in, in Milwaukee. Yeah. Um, I think. Um, Booker's playing really good, but Chris Paul's still struggling. Chris Paul's got like two points. Oh yeah, uh, so time. Paul's Paul's gotta get, bump those numbers up because if, if, it's if Chris take Paul both. gets it going, if Chris Paul gets it going, I think Suns can win. Um, but I think if it's just the Devin Booker show, I think Milwaukee pulls it out, make it two two. Um, oh man, if it goes I, I if it goes, I, if it goes it, two two, I think it's gonna go seven games. Yeah, I, I think I thought before the series started, I said I in my I head, said I said seven. I said Suns in seven. I think yeah, six I think or seven. Um, I think you said seven actually. Okay, so um, but I mean, I, if if the Suns can't pull out either tonight, and they go back home, it doesn't matter. Two, it doesn't matter if Suns lose tonight. It doesn't matter because who has home court advantage? Well, the Suns do. So that, what do you that, have that, to that's, do? that's my that's yeah, my point. It, that's right. my point. That's what I was going to say. It's I was going to say if the right. Suns don't win tonight, they've got home field. They got home court advantage. They just need to make sure that they win don't at home. lose. Yeah, win at home. So it, yeah. yeah. And that's which all you got to do. I think, I, which I think this is a good sign. If they can pull out this game, oh yeah, it's done. I think it's, it's over. I it's think over in game. It's over on in game, game five. five. Yep, hundred uh, percent. Because Booker's getting hot. Yeah, Booker's it's, hot, and dude, Chris Paul's I, struggling, which is okay. Like, but like tonight, it's okay. Now, if mm, if if Milwaukee right. wins tonight, and then Chris Paul comes out and struggles, game in five. Game five. Yeah, Milwaukee wins that. Then I might be saying Milwaukee in six. In six, yeah, because they'll go home and they'll win. So, um, uh, yeah, but I think that if if the Suns come out, if Chris Paul can get it together in the second half, going back to Phoenix, it's gonna be a madhouse. The Valley is gonna be a madhouse, especially if it's three to one. Yeah, especially if it's three to one. If it's two to two, it'll be a normal playoff atmosphere but if it's but three, three to, to one, one dude you're not you're not going to milwaukee the valley. M- milwaukee might not stand a chance no. if it's three one like no um i'm over the stereo ever since cleveland pulled off the three one against golden state um i'm like three one like i don't like three one scares as three me. One. i don't yeah. think about it as three one anymore i like and then the indians blew the three one lead against three, one, the yep. Yep. They, you know so uh like three one doesn't, me, doesn't hold the same that it does anymore to right. me personally, 100%. so, um, uh, yeah. If if but if Phoenix gets up three to one tonight and goes back to game five, oh boy, that's gonna be, a, that's gonna be electric. Those fans are gonna go crazy yep. in yep. Phoenix. Yeah. Um. All right. I yeah. I, it's hard to tell. Like I like I've, I've been peeking at the score uh, as we've been talking, and. The Suns have been up by like six, you know, four, six, two, Milwaukee six. Milwaukee comes yeah. back, get another well, lead. Milwaukee comes back. Comes back, yeah. And so, uh, as long as they can keep that up, as long as they get it, come out in uh, the third quarter and can. Uh, are you serious right now? Are you fucking yep. with me? Jesus uh, the thing that people people forget about though is that Milwaukee is a really talented team. So you can't like I think they're doing it like. They they got off to a slow start and then they they've come back um, to tie it. So I think that's uh, upside for um, for for Milwaukee that they can win this game. Um, and then I mean go back to to the last game where second quarter they won they won the quarter like thirty something to like seventeen <laughs> or something crazy like that. So oh yeah 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 yeah. Milwaukee's good enough at home and talented enough that they can 
they can drop a 30 bomb and, and hold Phoenix down. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, I would, I'm going to, I'm going to go and say, I'm going to stick with my seven game prediction. I'm going to say Milwaukee pulls this out. I think it's going to be home team wins every game this series. I think which that's how sucks. it's going to keep, keep playing out. Yeah. Which sucks. Like I, I think it, I, I'm still going with the gentleman sweep. I really wish it was going to be Suns and four just because of the, just because, but I love the, the gentleman sweep. Yeah. For the memes. Um, all right. So we finally got kind of came to the top five. I wish Derek would at least send us his top five, that little fucking shit. It's whatever. Um, okay. So for this week's top five, we're doing active quarterbacks. Please tell me you remember because I did tell you. Yeah, I got it. All right. All right. And I'm again, again, severely disappointed in you. What are you talking about? Look at the numbers. Okay. Look at the numbers. I actually, I actually looked at stats with this. Okay. Stats are fucking overrated. You are absolutely fucking stupid. What's your number five? Go. Okay. Well, if you're going, if you're going by stats, then your list is already wrong. My number five, I have Russell Wilson. Why? Why? I mean, why? Russell Wilson is accurate. He doesn't turn the ball over. He plays on a less talented team than a lot of quarterbacks in the NFL. Um, he wins a lot. He is a winner. All right. He is a short stature quarterback that has just like Drew Brees proved the doubters wrong and has been mm-hmm. become a great, a great NFL quarterback. And I think he is numero I'm, five. I am not saying that he is not a great quarterback because no. he is. Okay. He is, he is a top 10 quarterback. He is not top five. My top, top five. my number, my number five quarterback is Deshaun Watson. The numbers that this guy puts Blech. up on that. No, the numbers that this guy puts up on he's that shit active. ass fucking team. He is active. He's not on that shit fucking he's team. Not active. Okay? That shit fucking team. The numbers he puts up. I don't care what he does. What he does off field is different. And that's, if that is true, then, you know, he needs to go to jail, but if not, then it's whatever. But as on field, he is a top five quarterback. If he was playing on an actual team, he'd have he'd have over four thousand yards per year. He would. He'd be one of the best quarterbacks in the league. Okay, number four, Dak Prescott. I'm fucking leaving, dude. Why? Are you, what are you doing? What am are I? You, what do you mean? What am I doing? <laughs> okay, one. He didn't play half of the half of the fucking yeah. uh, time last year. Yeah, and guess and what? You he still also. Think- and while he was and while he was active last year before he got mm-hmm. hurt, he was also the leading passer in the NFL. He got hurt and was still the leading passer in the NFL for two weeks of not playing. He didn't play for two whole weeks, and he was still the NFL leader in yeah. passing yards. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I it, I don't I I don't care if you don't like the Cowboys, but the Dak slander needs to stop. Dak is a great quarterback. Dak is league. a good quarterback. He is a top five quarterback in this league right now. And you can't say he's not. I don't. I don't I, understand how you look at the numbers. You want to go stats? Go look at it. His numbers are great. I will fuck. I, I, you know, I'm not doing that right now. I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not worried about it. That's why we need a research again, department. Again. <laughs> yeah. Well, start paying us, and we'll get a research right. department. I'll, I'll have someone. I'll have someone off the side saying, "No, he he only he only scored 31 touchdowns this year, not 35." Shut up. Right. <laughs> um. So my number four is Josh Allen. This is more of the potential that he has. I, he is – I think this year he's going to have a great fucking year. Just – I don't – like I said, I, I, don't have, I don't have all of I his like, numbers up. I, I, like, um, I like Josh Allen. I probably would have him. I probably – if I was doing a top – like I would probably have him at like six or seven probably mm. on my list. I would probably have him somewhere around there. I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and, and say you're, you're a freaking idiot. Yeah, for, uh, for that, might, that might actually be the first time in our top ten, or our top five that so you haven't said I'm an idiot. Uh, number three, um, Aaron Rodgers. So I, I have a feeling that one or three through one are going to be pretty similar. Pretty similar. Um, yeah. But your but yours this is where I completely disagree with you, and I think you're an absolute idiot for Aaron Rodgers. Is uh, I have him. I think he is. Very, very, very good. But again, I don't know. Uh, go ahead, go with your number three because this is where I'm going to absolutely rip you apart. You don't, you don't think 
Patrick Mahomes is a top three quarterback. You are an absolute idiot if you think that Pat Mahomes is number three. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So let's just let's just put it out there right now. Aaron Rodgers has been doing this for sixteen years. Don't Tom care. Brady's Tom Brady's been doing this for over twenty fucking years. Don't they care. are still active. Aaron Rodgers is the fucking MVP of the league in year sixteen, and you fucking think Pat Mahomes is a better quarterback than him? Yeah. Pat Mahomes is a great quarterback. He is a top three quarterback. He is not better than Aaron Rodgers or Tom Brady right now. Yes, he is. Not at all. Yep. I can guarantee you that he's not because Tom Brady just beat him. And that doesn't have to do that. Okay. That has nothing to do with it. I know it doesn't have anything to do with it. That's my fucking point, though. Wynn's got nothing. Wynn's got nothing to do with it. I, I, honestly, I went back and forth on. I Okay. So I have Brady at two. You have. I, and I went back and forth at Brady and Aaron Rodgers because guess what? I think Aaron Rodgers is a better passy is a better passer than Tom Brady. He is more accurate. He is by more far. Accurate. He is he, is he has accurate. better right. aren't when if we go if we're going by straight quarterback arm talent, give me Mahomes and Rodgers all day before you give me Brady. Yeah, but see, that's the thing about quarterbacks, though. It's not all about the arm. Like, yeah, it's an important arm talent. Part. Absolutely, it's, a it's an important part. part. It's an important part, but the mind like you got to be able to to read that defense you got to be able to manipulate that defense you got to be able to see things before they happen mm-hmm. and tom yeah. brady is the best yeah man. yeah tom brady made a living off of freaking check downs and and long and just Let him. throwing Let and him. chucking it up to randy moss and and having bill belichick as his coach i mean tom I, brady tom brady is a little Aaron rodgers has had Aaron rodgers tom had brady Nelson. tom brady is the is is like a mixture of LeBron and Michael, <laughs> like Michael. Michael oh was God. really okay. The best listen, players in the fucking in the listen, fucking world. Listen, LeBron James is a really really good all around basketball player, but he needed uh he needs uh, he needs help from other players. Michael Jordan was really really good. Didn't need as much help, but he also had Phil Jackson, right? So that's kind of like Brady. Brady in in New England was Jordan. He was the best player on the team. He needed a little bit of help, but Belichick was the reason he helped him get there. Yeah, because because he needed that Bill Chick's defense got helped him get there right yep. now in Tampa he's like LeBron now he's surrounded by nothing but oh, talent. studs on both talent. sides of the ball yeah. right talent. so like like don't get me wrong I I freaking like Tom Brady he is a uh, Michigan alum go blue like I'm super I lo- love Tom Brady don't have nothing bad to say about the guy but if I am going pure quarterback the shit give me him. give me Mahomes and Rodgers but I'm good. But like that, just that winning gave me Brady over Rodgers. I don't even think it's a question. Mahomes is numero uno. He is Mah- the listen, best Mah- quarterback. Listen, listen, Mahomes has the talent, a hundred percent. He's making throws that other players don't even can't even dream of. Potential, uh, right? It's you brought it up with Josh Allen. Guess what? I, I, I think, did, and that's why Josh Allen is four, not one. Well, I think Matthew Stafford's also a better quarterback than Josh Allen is right now. But he's not in my top. You know I'm, what? You know what though, Matthew I, Matthew Stafford. Um, if he has a great year for the Rams, I think I had him. He I, has, I made he up, has to get it, a lot more, a lot more um, respect if he can come out and win with the Rams. Because I would, I, I would put him probably at six or seven with Josh Allen. It'd probably be him and Josh Allen. But I would yeah. probably give the edge to Stafford just because on a pure arm like josh allen can throw bombs. Josh allen has, yeah i was gonna say josh and allen he can, can throw that ball and he's a great years. and he's a great skin and he's a great escape artist and he can run too so i mm-hmm. think he brings another dimension yeah but like stafford is hey, just a pure straight great i mean he's thrown for how many freaking yards in Four, his career uh, like, 40 some thousand yeah. ridiculous numbers right yeah. so Derek would know if he was here dumbass. right um so i i i was i went back and forth on stafford and russell wilson um four or five actually is on in my top five um but i gave the edge to to russell just because he won more he yes won he had it. better he, he had better teams i don't know it was tough um to, like yeah. that fifth spot but i think like i'm gonna go on potential i think mahomes can be the greatest quarterback to ever play the game it's possible i mean he could definitely he could definitely be the best in his generation that's for sure because what's the, I mean, Mahomes can Mahomes can do this, and Mahomes adds that other dimension too. He can he can run, run he can yeah. run it too. 
Yeah, I agree. But Mahomes is accurate short and deep. Yeah. And I think so is Brady and so is Rodgers, but I think that extra element of the run escapability which rogers rogers can do and brady can do but they can't do it like Mahomes not like him it. now yeah, he doesn't like he doesn't do it like he did early on in his career right like rookie season because he's being smart now and being a pure passer wow. but I, I so i think i think you give pat i think you give pat a couple more years if you can give pat a couple more years and he can perform the way that he's been performing then i can then you can make an argument year, with him. how many years has he been in the league three he's got a super bowl yeah how many years did it take Rodgers to get one? Why are you? I don't have my. How many years did it take? Department. How many years? How many years did it take Brady to get one? Not as quick as Mahomes. All right. No, no, I'm not saying that. I, well, I'm just Mahomes, saying. Listen, like, Mahomes also had a better team than either of them did the, than his first year. I don't know. Brady's Patriots teams were pretty good. Yeah, back but in not two thousands. Yeah, but not not his first year. He had okay, but here's the thing though. In Kansas City, yeah, he had more offensive weapons. But go to Packers teams, uh, that Packers team in, in 2011, their yeah. defense was freaking loaded. Charles yeah. Woodson. Um, a, um, AJ Hawk. The long-haired guy, other long-haired guy. Matthews, Clay Matthews, Clay Matthews. was really, really good. Patriots back in the early 2000s, really, really good at defense, was, right? What was, it? was it Seymour or something like that? Richard Seymour. They, had, yeah. they, they, they were loaded. Yeah, um, Rodney loaded. Harrison, they were loaded. Brewski. Right. right. Yeah. They, they were freaking loaded on defense. And so were the Packers, right? Mm-hmm. And so, like, they like, yeah, they had yeah, – Mahomes might have the – but they, he did not have the defenses that – Well, they had – had, um, Oh, my God. What the hell is they, – they had the secondary. What the hell is that guy's name? I keep wanting to say Eric Church, and I know that's Eric wrong. Barry. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, but Eric Barry was also coming off can- surviving cancer. cancer yeah. Right? Hey, he wasn't – he wasn't story. He wasn't, story. Right. He wasn't Eric Berry, though. You know what I mean? Like, he right. Was so, like, Mahomes might have the offensive talent around him, but he has not had the defense that those guys had early on when they were winning. And I, he's had to display being more of a quarterback where, like, Tom could be checked down Charlie and just game manage. Brady was a game manager early on. Yeah. Well, Brady is early a, on. He is still a great game manager, though. He right. But, he's, but he can, ever since Randy Moss came into town, in New oh, England, yeah. then all of a sudden we're like, "Oh, hey, Tom Brady can sling it pretty good, right?" So, <laughs> well, he got um, better. He got he got more accurate with the deep ball once he got down to Tampa. Also, right, yeah, but I mean um, that also helps when he has he, you know great talent around him. Um, so yeah, that's this is why I'm going to take Mahomes because he I think he's accomplished more in his short time than he has than the other two, and the other two are I don't care if Brady keeps winning Super Bowls, he's past his prime. So is Rodgers. They're okay. both technically past their past, prime. They're technically past their prime. Rodgers might not even play still. We don't even know what he's doing. Mahomes hasn't even hit it yet. Mahomes is probably what? He's what, 25, 26? Yeah. I would give 25. him another two. I would give him two more years before he's actually the best he could possibly well, and, be. And that's what I'm saying. I'm, that's what I'm saying. Give him two more years. Get, let, but let's he's see. Let, so let's, good with the, let's, but he's I so understand. good already without I understand. That. I understand. I understand. But – it's for me. It's the it's the career that puts Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers over because they're still active. Ah, uh, it's what they're have you done active. for? It's what have you done for me lately? Uh, won a Super Bowl and went to the AFC cha- or NFC Championship game, right? And then played each other in the NFC Championship game. That's what they've done for you lately. Twice, Tom, Aaron Rodgers has been to the NFC Championship game twice in a row. So that's what he's done for you lately. Um. But so yeah, I mean, but how do you have? I don't understand I mean, how you have. Rod- so Rodgers was MVP, but Rodgers didn't play for a Super Bowl. Mahomes played because for of Super Tom Bowl. because Tom Brady just waltzed into the NFC and was like, "Hey guys, I'm going to take over now. This is my division or this is my conference." Yeah, I mean that's not exactly how it happened. I mean Tampa Bay also bought a great team. It was because Tom of Tom Brady. Brady. They yeah, bought I mean he helped, but but the team but Tampa still had to pay money to get a bunch of really really good players in there. He. He he walked his happy ass down to Tampa. Was like, "Ooh, look at this sunshine!" And then was like, "Hey, Bruce, I'm gonna go and get this guy and that guy in this okay. guy up here." And over so this here's my here, question. And we're gonna here's pay my him question. Off. Here's my question with Rodgers and Brady. Right? You have uh, Brady one, Rodgers two. Yes. Okay. Put Aaron Rodgers on Tampa Bay and put Brady on Green Bay. Who goes to the Super Bowl? Green Bay with Brady or Buccaneers with Rodgers? 
Same same coaching staff. Yeah, everything's the same except you switch uh, quarterbacks. The Bucks, the Bucks still right. because Lafleur. Okay, now that stupid put, shit with the fucking put, put Brady on the, the Packers. Kick. Put Brady on the Packers. Do the pa- do the Packers make an NFC Championship game with Brady? Yes. You think so? I see, 100%. and that's where I disagree. I don't think that Brady gets that far with the Packers team that Rodgers played with. This year. This year. This yeah, year. this year's past team. That, oh, for sure. No. Tom Brady is not Tom Brady is not a league MVP in Green Bay this year. I'm not saying he's league MVP. He's so, definitely making it to the NFC championship. Okay, game. so then Rodgers is better than Brady. But Rodgers You Rogers just said it. You had, just Rogers, said it. No, Rodgers had a one season. One season where he was balling out and he was on a revenge tour because of fucking Jordan Love. Right? Jordan Love? Yeah, Jordan Love. Yeah. And I don't care if he admits it or not, he's definitely playing his best ball because they drafted that motherfucker in the first round. He's showing that he's still got some left in the tank. I mean, yeah, he's been playing for six point. what sixteen, what, 16 years. years. So 16 yeah, you years. gotta you gotta show, hey, I still got a few more years left in me. Yeah. Like Brady's not the only one that can be old and out here slanging it. Well, when, like I'm when good you, too. When you're when you're in ten Super Bowls, come talk to me. Okay, okay that may okay, yeah. But if you put Aaron Rodgers on the Patriots, he's got just as many, if no. not more. Absolutely. Okay. Not well, the this, game con- manager. this conversation is over. It was over when you started telling me that Mahomes was fucking better than Brady. He is the best active quarterback in the NFL. <sighs> All right. Next week. Next week. Maybe Derek will be here. Maybe he won't. We'll I don't know. But we're going to do top five running backs. I'm Ooh. on this. I'm on this shit. Okay. I'm on this shit. I like, I like that we keep doing a top five every week. I, I yeah, I, this is definitely going to be a thing for us, especially I, leading up to the season. Yes, I like that. I like top fives. Uh, this is where we get our best our best arguments going, because you say some stupid ass shit sometimes. I swear to God, and it's just <laughs> it's under my skin. I like hey, I like the I like to keep the people on their toes. I like to keep you on your toes. Yeah, so. you really. Do. I, I I have to come in with a fucking like a book with like stats and shit because I have to defend my opinion. Like what what the fuck is this? Yeah, that's a, that's the point of this, right? Is to argue our <laughs> argue our opinion. I know, Maybe I'm just fucking around. <laughs> come with more knowledge in your head, bro. That's Dude, all I gotta say. Rocks, okay. This is rocks. Yeah, I know. <laughs> all right, and then you know me. I'm full of useless sports stuff. Yeah, yeah you're, you're that guy. You're that guy I'm at that the bar. Guy. You're that guy at the bar. Well, back in 1986, somebody will, somebody will say, "Yeah, I'm the one that is not a Lions fan, but knew." <laughs> the, <laughs> oh my the, god, I forgot! I forgot to do fucking trivia. Trivia, yeah. So maybe it's we right. can get that in. It's fine. Uh, I'll get we can a couple. start that though. We can start that though once uh, season starts, probably. Yeah, I like that idea. We're gonna start having guests too. I um, I have a couple people lined up that want to come in uh, during the season. Um, I might have my I might have one of my buddies come on. Um, who uh, actually is a radio host. I need to talk to him about it yet, but... Um, oh, yeah, yeah, you were talking about him down to date. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, do I they like to him? argue just as much as we do? Oh, dude, he, so... Okay, good. He, but I he, get that. he lives in Dayton, and obviously it's all red down there, but he's an Indians fan. It kills those people. <laughs> it is hilarious. I listen, to his, I listen to his show all the time, and it is the best, but... So, anyways, we're yeah, we're gonna start ramping that shit up once the league or once the um, season starts. Um, like I always, make sure that you uh, subscribe to the podcast wherever you listen to your podcast. Set. Uh, make sure that you uh, uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel, like the video, comment, uh, give us your top five, like always, um, and make sure you have an excuse as to why they're your top five because Nick will probably come after you. <laughs> more than um, likely, get yeah, more than likely. Um. Yeah, like I was just uh, make sure you share. Make sure you share. Share it. Get the fuck out there. You know, share the podcast. Um, Let us know that you're smarter than us. I, I, you're, you're not. <laughs> but it's fine. Uh, <laughs> um, and yeah, I guess we'll see you guys next week. Peace out.